Hello, my name is Ross McGill. Um, I have been a school teacher for 25 years, uh, senior leader for about the last decade. Um, about 10 years ago I started tweeting and blogging um, as Teacher Toolkit and it's become one of the most popular sites in the UK and probably around the world. Why is effective classroom differentiation important? Simply because kids can get lost. Um, we have the real challenge in any classroom across the world. Um, you know, different settings is key, context, things like that. But um, you know, when you're working with uh, low-income families, disadvantaged kids, you want to kind of bridge the attainment gap. That's a difficult challenge with funding cuts. Um, but for the general teacher on the classroom floor, with 30 kids in front of them, it's a real challenge, full stop. First one would be uh, having a secure overview uh, in terms of not just the student data but their social, mental, emotional health, uh, you know, triangulating all those different sources, speaking with kids, with parents, out of class as well as in the classroom. Uh, that would be my number one. Number two, um, lesson planning. Although there's a, uh, lots of myths about lesson plans, you know, on templates, paper, things like that have been uh, kind of quashed, um, I approach planning from a cognitive point of view, rather than what you do, look at the why. Um, and that tends to help reduce teacher workload, uh, rather than looking at it as a one-off uh, lesson episode, look at it as a, se a scheme of work over a series of lessons, perhaps for 10 or 12 weeks. Tip number three would be questioning. Now, there's lots of different techniques for questioning. Uh, the key thing I would emphasize is plan a key question for groups of students. You can't ask 30 kids different questions. You can't meet all their needs. Uh, but if you have planned questions, dare I say top, middle or bottom, or think of the types of questions you would ask. Um, one example is called a Fermi question, which is a, a statistical question, which begins with how many. So how many balloons could you fit in this room? How long is this video? Uh, and then straight away you, you encourage a creative process and you get the kids thinking, it gives you a bit of feedback, a bit of time uh, to, to go on to the next episode in the class. Tip number four is look after yourself. After 25 years of teaching, uh, I think of all the disasters I had in the classroom, for, for whatever reason, having a late night or not looking after myself. Um, it sounds silly, but eight hours of sleep, a bottle of water on your desk and a banana or something every single day makes a big difference to your, to your health, uh, especially if you're working 45 to 60 hours every week. Tip number five, stickability. There's lots of research looking at uh, how we learn as students, um, making it stick. Uh, I look at stickability on my five minute lesson plan. Simply ask yourself two questions. When you have 30 kids in your class, what do you want the kids to take away from your lesson and what's the key thing you want to bring back? If you can answer that in one word, that's essentially what you should focus your entire lesson on. Uh, that's what stickability is. That should hopefully um, improve your effectiveness in the classroom.